So my wife's out of town taking the children uh, to a nearby city with my mother to look at museums. Uh, they do it every few months, go on a museum trip. So they're visiting museums in Texas. Uh, and so I'm home alone. I don't know why that adds the story. But it's already kind of a bummer. You come home, your family in there. So I go, I'll go out to a movie with my dad last night. So we went out and saw just to see what all the hype was about. Uh, the worst movie ever, as they're calling it. Uh, not being contrarian, saying it has some, some good points, but also some bad points. Um, only God forgives with Gosling and, and the amazing director has made some other very interesting films, amazing cinematography. <laughs> but I get home at 1030 at night with a movie that's got a lot of you know graphic violence in it. And I walk in and I see a fishing pole in the living room going into my youngest daughter's bedroom. Fishing line. And so I go in there and the Chihuahua, Bambi, 16 years old, love the dog, is pinned down to the carpet and has a deep sea fishing lure that was in the garage. The garage was closed. I don't know. My son had it out or something left it in his room. I don't know what happened. Deep sea lure, pinning it to the ground because it's one of those deep sea lures about four inches long. And then it's got a big trouble look on the back. Maybe we should Google and show the people this or start page it. Uh, a, a, a treble hook uh, topwater bait. And it's got a treble hook, three hooks on the back with really bad barbs and three on the front. It's inner chest with it pinned to the floor with the other one pinned to her arm. And I worked for a small animal vet for a couple of years, worked for a large animal vet off and on for about a year in, in several stints. So I, I could tell she didn't even go to the vet because a vet that wants a bunch of money uh, out of you uh, would do a big surgery, put her under at 16 years old. She's already got health problems, might not live. Barely survived a surgery a few years ago uh, for some medical issues. And so, because I knew I'd have to talk to my wife about it and why I didn't take her to the vet and all this stuff. But the point is, so I'm, I'm sitting there and, and, and I can either take her to the vet and an old-fashioned vet's going to pull these out and it's going to rip the skin. Or a modern vet's going to do surgery and slice it open and, you know, 10 times worse for the dog. So I'm sitting there, and I turn the dog over with carpet attached to her, and it's, it's hard to pull a treble hook out of a fish's mouth. you got to use pliers. But I'm so emotional, and I don't think to go get pliers. But I know how to work them out, so you pull up and out. But I was more exhausted after this last night than I've been in decades, and then this morning I was really exhausted psychically, you know, psychologically, from the dog, which didn't resist me. It knew it, 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 knew it wanted to be released. It took me like 10 minutes because she had from fighting it, all three hooks on each of them in her, from, you know, trying to get it out, more got in. So I had, and it's hard when there's three in. I had to work one out and got so angry, I was able to actually bend it up and out doing it. And then I had to get the others out. And the point is, is that uh, I couldn't imagine, like, your child in a car wreck or something, about their kids pinned in and crying and hurt, what it would be like, because I was like, you know, love the dog and have empathy for it. And then I just wondered, I'm so drained today and, and really in a uh, weird mental state from it. And it's not even that traumatic, but it, it was my dog. I mean, I'd been there and helped other animals that were in trouble and it's still stressful. But I thought about how stressful it is for doctors and vets who have empathy to, to, to be around suffering. And I thought, who are people that like suffering? And, and it just kind of made me think what the enemy's like. And, and then they manipulate those of us that have bleeding hearts for life, they manipulate us to give up our liberties and things in the name of doing sweet, nice things, and they're just messing with us. But then I thought it is good. I wouldn't enjoy hurting somebody who was really evil, but I would enjoy stopping them. So I guess in a way, I, you know, some bully starts a fight with you, they're beating you up, you get a good punch in, knock them out, they hit the concrete. And for a minute, you know, as you watch blood pour out from the back of their head, you're like, yeah. And then you go, uh-oh. And that person's like, you know, flopping around on the ground. And you realize, oh, I'm going to have to deal with this. But, but, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm glad I hurt him. It's glad you've had victory, but not glad you're just hurting someone, even somebody who's evil. I, I just, it's so alien to me, like, people sexually that are into pain and stuff. I, I just, I, I just don't, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And, and I guess I'm a square. I'm a bad guy. I'm a Boy Scout. That's why I'm wearing a Boy Scout. Uniform today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Before he died, Arthur C. Clarke, inventor of the telecommunications satellite, OSS operative, Fabian Socialist, New World Order Master Planner, uh, basically gave out the symbology of 2001 Space Odyssey. And you can go look up my reviews of that film going back more than 15 years. One of them is online. It's exactly what Arthur C. Clarke later said it was. And I mean, it's not hard. When you know all this symbology, archetypal, Joseph Campbell didn't invent all this. He kind of quantified it. You realize the subconscious programming that the social engineers are involved in. And I want you to be aware of the fire of the gods. That, because they're not gods. They're humans like us trying to suppress us. I believe in an open, straight-up society. And only God forgives first got really bad reviews. Now it's getting really good reviews in the last few days as people start to get what it's really about. I don't like just gratuitous, mindless, pointless violence. I mean, if it's based on a true story to illustrate something, it's got some scenes of torture in it. And it's about the two sides of good and evil, and at certain points, how close are they together? And the, the Brian Gosling character is almost the bridge between his brother, uh, Ryan Gosling, uh, and his brother who plays the, the devil. I mean, that's all it is. I'm going to talk to the devil's the tagline uh, for the film. And it is very easy to understand uh, what the whole thing is about. And it just shows how unconscious the population is that they still don't know what the movie is about. But it is a two, it has 2001 Space Odyssey type stuff. It's got him going through the interdimensional gate or, or the womb. And it's got him being reincarnated, and it's got the the, the police captain and the uh, Ryan Gosling character have a psychic connection, and it's totally clear what's going on in the film. And I, I just, again, I, I'm not up here going, hey, I know what the film's really all about. Ha ha, you don't. I don't know how people can't go see the movie and see what it's about. Now, at one level, it is an Asian exploitation film about, yeah, the Asians beat up the white guys and kill the white guys, and they're in charge, and they're slick, and they're cool. But it's not even really aimed at an Asian market. It's meant to look like an Asian film. It's very sophisticated, okay? I'll probably go see it again. Uh, because it, 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 it's, it's definitely, I, you know, I want to get that director on and ask that guy, I'm sure he's really smart, uh, European fellow, uh, Nicholas winding refin i'm gonna go see his other movies now i, I want to get him on and say did you, you came up with this on your own because uh it's one thing to even know this stuff nothing to actually put it into form and i'm still trying to analyze what the motive is in this i don't think there is a motive i think it's super deep art over the top avant-garde and it's really a statement about all the senseless violence in the culture there are movies out that that you know take sylvester stallone and in his latest uh, uh movies the expendables that are, are probably 50 times more violent and more graphic. But this is done in a very archetypal, slow way, the violence that's in it. It actually has a lot less violence in it than a John Wayne movie, but it's done humanizing people. Very sophisticated art. Um, Stanley Kubrick would have had trouble pulling something like this off. People go see, you know, Full Metal Jacket and go, they don't say, oh, the violence, it's horrible, or whatever. It, it, it's because it's meant, it's meant to get to you. It's kind of like when I got mad on Piers Morgan. People are like, oh, it was terrible performance, but later, it's the biggest thing ever. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. Pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam 
when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. And look, here's the deal. My crew has done a monumental job uh, just watching and going over and trying to get ready. Uh, 35 videos I want to play excerpts of on air. And I, I'm going to have to do it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We'll have to make that. And we'll have to have meetings about it and have it all ready because, you know, uh, we, we, we throw a bunch of videos in there and then we kind of have a meeting about it and we wait three hours and I go, now go to it and whatever. We're going to really give credit where credit's due to the Paul Revere entrance and the top 35, but the top 300 or so uh, are posted in the front page, top 35, at Infowars.com forward slash Paul. You can comment there. And most people are really positive about not being in the top 35. Some people are real mad. They thought their ship had come in. Your ship came in making a film. Your ship came in taking action against the globalists. Your ship came in living, contributing. That was the whole point of this. It isn't about the $115,000. It's about you guys all trying to make films, even if your film's not that good. The first stuff I did is I'd turn on a light in the control room because it took like back then six months of classes to get on access because they only gave, it took like three classes and they only gave them every two months. And they gave them right around the same time and I was working full time so I'd have to go in, take classes, volunteer on other shows where I could get on and then uh, you know just be a guest for one minute on somebody's show in, in 1995. And then when I finally, after six months, got my license, you know, I didn't, didn't know to go ask people to help me or whatever. I went in the control room, brought a camera in. What I'd turn on the light real bright, the exposure all wrong, and go, I think it's wrong they want to take our guns. In third world countries, they've done that to enslave them. Listen, the government's getting guns, and, and locally they're taking old people's property for this SOS plan. It has nothing to do with the, with the water recharge zone, and they're giving it to... Uh, and by the way, we should go do such and such. I mean, it was just... Purely resisting, and and you'd see it out of six hundred plus entries. I, I would say my first shows, uh, production wise, are worse than everything you did. I, I mean, I would be number six hundred and fifty five. Okay, I mean the worst, bottom of the barrel. And some days I'm still the worst, bottom of the barrel. Do you know what? I'm real, folks, and you know it, don't you? And what I like is real. I wasn't smiling on a power trip. I was thinking about real people and just how much I love them. Because I'm a love machine, ladies and gentlemen. And I work for you and you work for me. We're in this together. And this is a fun adventure on a planetoid in deep space with crazy government and a bunch of weirdos that love to torture us and stuff running things. And this is the great animating contest of liberty. This is what makes good people stand and flourish and shine is the challenge of evil. And I can see God's plan. Though from a primitive troglodyte perspective, I can see God's plan, just the edge of it. And I can imagine, and then I can begin to imagine the things the ear has not heard, the eye has not seen that God has in store for us. And I'm just, you know what, if they kill me, beam me up, Scotty. You can be an atheist all you want, ladies and gentlemen. I know that I go on. And I choose to go with good. You can choose to be petty and evil and into yourself and everything you're going to be with that energy forever and that's hell that's hell god just puts you in with your own people because you've chosen it i had tried everything i'd cut back the amount of food i was eating i was lifting weights and jogging but nothing was working my body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. 
start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Habunga, Mahunga, Hazunga. Nobody understands that because it's gibberish. And that's what the globalists pump out is cultural gibberish. Everybody just gets confused. That's one of their most effective propaganda techniques. I got to tell you, Hollywood knows that more and more positive stuff is what's selling. So you see movies like Up and Superman, Man of Steel, uh, and, 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 and more wholesome narratives. But the establishment allows it because it's only in fiction. So it almost gives you like the idea in your mind of a respite from the tyranny. And that's why they allow that. We need to have real respite in our own lives and build good stories in our own lives and do good things. Not just because we're goody tissues, but because it's fulfilling. And that's what really blocks the New World Order. So I salute my crew, the sponsors, the listeners, everybody that makes the transmission possible. I'm going to go to your phone calls. That's why we're in overdrive. But some clips I promised to get to. Uh, the first one I want to play is a marijuana is the new beer ad that's showing at NASCAR events to the hundreds of thousands that attend on the jumbotrons. And, and I want to be clear. I don't think marijuana overall... <clears throat> is totally positive. I know it has a lot of medical attributes. I know the feds hate it because they can't control it. It can be grown anywhere. They banned hemp that doesn't even have THC that makes better cotton and better stuff than polyester. The chemical groups and cotton groups were lobbied against it. I get all that. But there's also this pro-weed culture where the marijuana now, I mean, is like super strong, a lot of it. And, and it does turn a lot of people that would just be medium uh, achievers into zombies, into welfare zombies, smoking dope and watching TV all day and walking around so stoned they look like they've had a lobotomy. So, so, so let's just get it straight. I want it decriminalized because I'm tired of it funding the police state takeover. The British brought down China by getting China to make drugs illegal so they could ship them in and make profits and take over. I don't like the globalists and the banks doing this so they can launder the money. That's why I'm for total, pretty much legalization. I think it should be controlled though because then it'll just go right back into a black market they can control. It's going to be a, a big fight, but, but you know, this ad says less harmful than alcohol, way less harmful on average. Now they're starting to engineer marijuana and, and, and breed it to be stronger and stronger, and I think therein lies the issue, and it'll also give marijuana a bad name. I mean, it's a million times better than Prozac, if you're upset, the studies show. It's better for depression, people with cancer, all sorts of stuff, helping them hold down food. I mean, it has a lot of miraculous traits to it, and if people want to go home after a long day and not abuse marijuana and, and you know take a couple of tokes off a joint. George Washington did that. They called it to toothache or stomachache uh, hemp. They, you know, they they because only a few varieties actually have the THC and high levels in it. So George Washington smoked pot out of a, out of when he had toothaches. I mean, you know, a long day for the president. Let me have some of that. Let me have some of that stomachache or some of that toothache weed. I mean, you know, every culture in most areas of the world has smoked marijuana, and, they, and it was the medicine man. It was a it's just a drug, folks. It's a drug that's a lot better than the pharmaceutical stuff. So that's where I stand on marijuana. I mean, I, as an experiment throughout my life, have smoked marijuana off and on. Uh, I didn't like it when I was younger because I didn't know what the stuff my friends had was like cheap. You know, what they call like Mexican brown weed. And it makes you want to just eat, you know, lay there on the couch, feel like you've been run over by a truck. And just, uh, it's not what I'm into. Uh, I've smoked d d designer marijuana before that made me feel like I could write classical music. I, I, so I'm going to just tell you right now, folks, it, it's, it's, it's a heavy-duty thing, the different varieties they've got. Now, the stuff rich people are smoking in Los Angeles is, is, is really amazing. The issue is, though, they start doing it more and more, and I see it take over their lives as well. So I'm not smoking it. Everybody that's into it, it takes over their life. So I want to be clear about it to young people out there. Uh, and young people aren't going to listen to a message. If you smoke marijuana, you'll kill your parents like Reefer Madness. They'll listen to me be honest about it. Yeah, I'm not going to say I, I, I tried marijuana but didn't inhale. I, I've inhaled plenty. I'm like, well, I like these cigarettes and chewing tobacco so much. And my dad's at work. I smoke his uh, regular pipe with, uh, you know, uh, tobacco. I love this. Let me, give me some of that marijuana. I don't like it. Uh but again, I've been old-fashioned marijuana. I don't like it. The new stuff is scary. Uh, and uh, you can tell when somebody's a dope smoker, a heavy dope smoker. It really changes them. It builds up in the brain. It doesn't kill brain cells. It, it puts them into a arrested, relaxed formation. 
And I'll tell you this, I don't ever get any trouble out of pot smokers. And the government kind of likes that. So see, that's why there's also the George Soros group wants to legalize it because, uh, well, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, I've got to go to your calls. The, you know, the whole point is, is that there's a lot of contending groups out there. And, and there's also big groups that know when this stuff gets legalized, they want to be in position to control it. And the last thing I want as it becomes legalized is to have the cigarette companies that are tied up with big pharma. You didn't know that? Look it up. I, the last thing I want is for them to go in and add chemicals. You know, some cigarettes have over 300 chemicals in them. That's what's really deadly in them. Now the cigarettes have flame retardant in it that's totally carcinogenic. Uh, carcinogenic. I mean, you'd be crazy to smoke. Folks, if you smoke cigarettes, stop now. Please stop now. People go, well, why is the government doing it? Because they lost that battle. Government used to say, smoke cigarettes. They knew hundreds of years ago what tobacco did when it's abused. Okay, now let's get to this right here. 97% of climate activists in the pay of big oil. Shock. London Telegraph. I already knew this, but James Dillingpole has written about it and links to the study. Yes, big oil wants to shut down its main competition. Who's that? Well, giving lip service to, to, to fake new energy so they can control the new energy movement and not let the real one come forward. See, that's control your enemy. Fund Al-Qaeda. Fund the communists. See, see, so then you can oppose them while controlling them. It's full spectrum dominance. It's the globalist mindset. It's like the, one of the first James Bond movies. They have, you know, three fighting fish. And he opens the door and the two kill each other. Or, or one gets killed, the other gets injured, then the big one comes in and knocks out the competition. That's how this works, folks. Get into full-spectrum dominance awareness. It's, it's elementary, uh, my dear friend, once you do it. But, I mean, I just discovered this at the underwriting. 97%, he goes through the links to it, of the climate change alarmist groups are funded, wait for it, by big oil. Oh, Yeah. ExxonMobil, Dutch Rochelle, BP, Texaco, Chevron, of course, because what is the main challenge to fuel, to oil? The main challenge is coal. And, and again, I get zero money from coal. My family gets no money from coal. Because they always say, you're making money for the oil companies. No, no, the oil companies want to shut down our power plants and make us energy starved. On average. I mean, the AP sued in 2000 got the documents where they said there's too much oil worldwide. Let's fund this peak oil idea. This is a, not an opinion. Ten oil companies met in 1995 and 96. 95 they first met. And the AP article shows that. Paul Watson's written about the AP article years after it came out, just pointing it out. And I'm surprised it came out in AP, <clears throat> but of course it didn't get picked up anywhere. And then a year later they meet again and they go, the answer is buy up all the refineries, shut them off, and fund environmental groups to demand new ones not be built and demand that no pipelines be built. That way we have artificial scarcity. And that's why you've gone since then from paying 65, 70, 85, 90 cents a gallon to paying 350 a gallon and dollar devaluation. See, this is what real info is about. Then you don't have to be conned and ripped off anymore. And I mean, if I have one more communist authoritarian hippie, because this happens every few months in Whole Foods or on the street, go, I like your show, man, but I know you're fun about oil companies on global warming. I mean, I want to punch him in the nose, okay? Let me tell you what I do get. Well, I don't get any money from it, but I've got family gets a little bit of money from it. It's natural gas. I mean, on average, you get like 500 bucks a month or something, you know, because those things don't even hardly pump any in East Texas. This cousin gets 600, this one gets 500, this one gets 400. I mean, I, I, you know, the whole point is, is that if, if they're able to shut down coal, and natural gas groups are lobbying to shut down coal too, then I'll, I mean, my family will start getting some money. I guess if I just thought of things like from a, from a self-centered position, that I would then be, yes, yes, shut down coal, shut down coal, shut down coal. Because we might get tens of thousands of dollars a month in my family if, if that happened. And, and don't worry, natural gas companies are lobbying. They're one of the biggest groups to shut down coal. <laughs> most of your, th these electric cars, most of their power, 50 plus percent comes from coal. I mean, I love it. They, they, they say coal's the worst thing, and that's where it's not the worst thing. They're totally clean now, and they're shutting them down. They're shutting America down. It's why I obsess on this. We're going to skip this network break because this is such a big central deal. You know, real. Uh, Godzillas came out of the ocean 
And they wanted to take out our cities. They'd attack our power plants, folks. That's what Obama is, is a giant kaiju. A giant, uh, you know, it's the name of Japanese monster or Godzilla. And, and I've already gone over that analogy with people, but I'm just watching this happen. And then here it is, the proof. I, 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 I knew it was most of them. I, in fact, I never saw a, a, an Enviro-Nazi group that wasn't funded by oil companies. And see the genius of that? You're like, Al-Qaeda is funded by the government. Ho, 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 you're crazy. And then it's like, it's all admitted, though, if you just look. Uh, no, the anti-oil groups are funded by oil because it's fake opposition. And then it's admitted that people just can't compute that. Our government funded Hitler. Our government funded the communist. Because our government's not our government. It's the globalist. That's why they're in charge. That's why they're in control. They know what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I would just run ads saying the 1997 uh, congressional hearing with the CIA Solicitor General found that the vast majority of narcotics are shipped into the country by the government. And since then, uh, since the drug war began in the 1980s, really started in the mid-70s, but heated up in the 80s, we've seen a more than tripling of the amount of drug use in the country. Alcohol prohibition didn't work, and this prohibition didn't work, unless it's lining the bank accounts of giant banks. Bloomberg reported that Wachovia and Wells Fargo alone laundered $378 billion in a two-year period. Now you know why they're lobbying to keep drugs illegal, because they're the drug dealers. There's your... 60 second ad, don't you guys think that that's the ad we should have? Of course, the people at NASCAR will be like, what, they're talking bad about banks? It's a commie ad. So you've got to tailor it that way. Okay, my dear commies, let's go ahead and uh, talk to Andy in Utah, site of the giant NSA command base. Hey there, Alex. How you doing? Good. I'm seeing the uh, Hitler mustache out here, too. It must be up there, then. Oh, you're seeing it in uh, the clouds? You're a racist? Uh, yeah, I must be, too. Must well, be. yeah, I mean, I mean, my dog looks like he has a Hitler mustache. and The dog needs to be banned, like that teapot. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, I, I wouldn't be in hand and to say this, but I've got a you know, dear friend who's black. He's not very literate out here, and he doesn't listen to InfoWars, and he's retired, but... Well, he sure has been buying into this uh, Tea Party as racist stuff. I had to have a sit down with him the other day, but yeah, they're they're certainly doing their best Madison Avenue, you know. Job that's it. That's here. right. They're Madison so, Avenueing that guns and freedom are racist because once they teach you all the whites are racist, and then what are they promoting? They're promoting freedom. Oh my goodness! Well, you saw that J.C. Penny teapot. I mean, that was racist too. And if you don't support the health care bill, you're a racist. You didn't know that, Aunt, uh, Andy? <laughs> Uh, Alex, you know, I love your sarcasm. I think the best part uh, part of it is when you do one of your voice imitations while you do it. Otherwise, dum-dums think you might be telling, you know, speaking while you're on your mind. Uh, I no, no, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, the absurdity of all of this. I mean, this is, I don't need to take acid. I mean, this is like li living, living in this modern culture is like hallucinating. I mean, it, it is just freaky. And, and, and then again, those of us that know it's crazy, we become the weirdos. God bless you. Good to hear from you, Andy. And I've used this analogy 5,000 times. I'll do it again. If I teleported back 1,000 years ago to central Mexico in, 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 in Chalupa, outside Mexico City, and I said, do not sacrifice your children to Quetzalcoatl or to Chocmul. You know, the sun is really a ball of fire. It will come back in the morning. Uh, we're in deep space, two-thirds of the way out on the spiral arm. Of the Milky Way galaxy, the atmosphere is thinner than the skin on a uh, apple. Uh, we, we, we uh, yeah, I come from the future. They would say sacrifice him, and I know they would because albinos or white people. Whenever they had albinos, they got tortured royally for a long period of time because that was special for the gods. Anything special, so it'd be off off with this cracker's uh, hind end immediately, uh, just because it was so wonderful and so 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 alien. So special. Uh, and if I teleported back 3,000 years ago to one of the stone circles where they were sacrificing people, and I said, you're feeling energy because there's a magnetic line blasting out of the earth here, and you have cells in your brain used for navigation like birds and fish, that's now been proven, that are picking up on this. The normal electromagnetic field of the earth that you're in tune with is about 10 times stronger here. They would say, or 
or I guess they'd actually speak kind of a Germanic uh, Celtic dialect of unga sunga bunga and you know rothgar hegels and gagan gugan jiggle bugger han jaga bunga ching tall you know whatever and drag me on I mean I don't know trying to make up some ancient dialect has his in Brunsachen gugan by is that pretty good? It's German speaking in tongues now? All right. I had to like get in the mode and like think of the dialect sound. My wife has a full degree in French, and let me tell you, that she gets, if I want to push her buttons, I just go, j'attends la quai des butetons, j'ai le monde les colors, what do you, mimi poupou l'oudi, j'ai la tronlingue, I mean, it's just like, it's over. Nails on a chalkboard, have you heard my Italian? Italian is such, so beautiful, I can't do it. I mean, I can't, I, I heard my wife the other day talking to one of her old Italian friends, and I was just sitting there for like five minutes on the bed while she's on the phone with one of her friends speaking in Italian, it's just so beautiful, man. Anyways, enough. Enough, enough. Yeah, it is the best, especially when a woman's speaking it. Uh, let's go to Jersey Pete. Have you seen any clouds look like Hitler? We need to ban them. Go ahead. Sorry, you broke up just there, Alex. Have you seen any clouds that look like Hitler? Uh, today, no, I haven't. See, actually, the chemtrails are, are obscuring most of the, uh, the clouds today. How would you like my ancient Germanic uh, uh, language I just invented? It was pretty good, you know. Being of uh, Hungarian ancestry, I, I feel like I heard some Magyar tongue in there, but uh, it's uh, it was uh, quite enter entertaining. Yeah, I was trying to get a Stone Age European sound there. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's we all have the ancient data crystals in there that are just like uh, shadows of actually what went on. That we call that instincts. So go ahead. Well, there you go. Hey, it really is a you know a, a great joy to uh, speak with you this afternoon, and. Uh, you know, you often say that uh, fortune favors the bold, and, uh, you know, I believe that's true. And uh, there's another great phrase, and I don't know who the author is, but uh, it goes, uh, you know, act boldly and unseen forces uh, will come to your aid, which I think is, a, you know, one... Yeah, yeah, that's in that movie, uh, uh, Almost Famous. And then I forget who said that exactly. It was some philosopher. Look that up. Uh, act boldly, and mighty forces will come to your aid. Yeah. So you know, I I um I'd like to roll out uh, you know what I think is potentially you know a huge game changing you know idea, and uh, I I'm calling it the Benjamin Franklin billion dollar challenge, and uh, I'm inviting all free humans uh, who hear my voice. You mean terrorists? Uh, well, for All humans. living humans that are not in the globalist bloodline are terrorists. That's that's the New World Order in essence. Well, there you go, with the double speak. So we know that in, in actuality, they're liberty lovers. Uh, to join with me in standing with you, Alex. Join me, and, and I will complete your training. We can destroy the emperor. That's the right. rule of galaxy is father and son. <laughs> Uh, Join me, and I will complete your training. You don't know the power of the dark side. I have to get into my mode to be able to do it, but... How about a little bit of this? How about a little bit? We're in overdrive. I'm acting goofy. It's Friday. How about a Autobots transform and roll out? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. No, no, that's quite all right. Um, we need we need to remember our sense of humor when when times are as crazy as they are right now. So you know, I I totally get it. But but here's this idea. Oh oh oh, uh, teeny I'm, Jedi. I'm, Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. You know, um, I know that you folks are have a pretty good handle on a weekly basis. You know, how many listeners, viewers, you know, ten to fifteen million people. But here's the idea. Folks, I'm asking you uh, to join with me in making a one-time only, no-strings-attached, $100 donation for the creation of a Liberty Defense Fund. At to me, immediately. <laughs> when you think about this, we can make history. Now, this is not, I don't think, and, and, and the idea, ideas, when they're popped, you don't know where they're going to go. And, and I'll tell you, quite frankly. What frank, ideas? You mean terrorist history. actions? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, actions consistent with liberty and the foundings of our country. When you think about it, every individual who will 
hear my voice can actively take part in making actual bona fide history. I know, you but know, most people don't get involved. I mean, you can have millions of listeners, and we try to do a money bomb, you know, it raises, raises a half million. Sounds like a lot. I mean, that barely pays for anything. I mean, I spend half my time just trying to make money to get the truth out, and then I'm half burnt out by the time I get on air, just fiddle fratting with money issues. But I hear you. Like, I didn't even plug but once today products on air. Please go to InfoWarsHealth.com, get the new Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Please get the Monty Phylon. It's at InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139 and get the new film, State of Mind on DVD, if you want to support us. I mean, you know, we're not perfect, but we're up there with the best there is in fighting this whole new world order. We're just going to go into more overdrive straight ahead. We'll see if I can compose myself and not do any more voices. Crazy person, guys, you just had on the air. Get that guy out of here. Somebody just broke in over the satellite. Did you hear that? Talking bad about my girlfriend, Rachel Maddow. Most beautiful woman in the world. The femininity is just... Ugh. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better put a ring on her finger before the wiener gets in there. Yeah, wiener's on TV right now. The headline is Wiener Speaks. They just make jokes everywhere on Fox. <laughs> wiener Speaks. <laughs> you know what happens if you... Uh, all right, I'm not going to say it. They had a joke going on in the back of the office. Because everything's so politically correct. No, no, it's true. What happens if you cross an Irishman with wiener? You would get a McWiener. And, and, and maybe... Maybe McDonald's, well, I'm part Irish, so I can make the joke. I mean, give me a break, folks. Maybe that's the answer, is that we have McDonald's and sell that idea to McDonald's. A pure GMO uh, wiener, a McWiener. A McWiener! What's more American than a McWiener? Is that a good idea? And I guess if he was Scottish, he'd be a Mac wiener. <laughs> what if he was uh, British? He'd be a, a lime wiener. Oh, my goodness. A, uh, hey, now I'm getting hungry. A kraut wiener. That would be even, that, I like sauerkraut on my hot dogs. If I'm going to eat a hot dog, I'd have sauerkraut and onions and, uh, and, and uh, the, uh, the yellow stuff, the mustard on top of there. Well, I'm, I could go some really bad places with this. I'm going to stop right now. Folks, what happens is I had a really stressful night last night. I get a little bit punch drunk. Then I get on air and the wheels come off. It's like, it's what's happening right now. That's why I quit doing four hours. I just cannot do four hours because I start screwing around. I apologize. Let's go to calls. That's why I'm in overdrive is to take your calls. Uh, Ziggy, I'm a fan, by the way, Ziggy, from Tennessee of your... Uh, Funny papers in the paper of your cartoon. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, I'm one of those people who are really concerned about our country. You're and a terrorist? I live in a, I'm concerned about where it's going, and, and I, that's why I contributed to the contest. I, I live in a motel. I work seven days a week. I, you know, if I miss three days, I'm not eating. So I, I sent you my widow's mite, and I hope you got it. It uh, was a song called The Ones Who Want You Gone. I had it cheap video made. took, like, a day to shoot. I tell you what, let's cue it up and play it right now. I haven't even seen it. We'll play part of it at least. It's on YouTube. What's the name of it? Uh, it's called The Ones Who Want You Gone. The Ones Who Want You Gone. And what's the name of your channel? Uh, I'm on uh, I, I'm on uh, InfoWars contest entries where I find it. No, no, I know, but we'll need to search it on YouTube. Just, just, just uh, s say the name again. It's uh, Ziggy Parton, Z-I-G-G-Y-P-A-R-T-O-N. Ziggy Parton, and then the name of the, 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 the video one more time? Is The Ones Who Want You Gone. The Ones Who Want You Gone. Well, listen, 
That's your good widows, Mike. And that's how they get the working poor, where you can't ever get the credit or the, or the money you need to get the apartment. And then I talked to big apartment managers. They're ordered by the federal government to give the illegals the apartment with no proof, preferential treatment over Americans, whether you be white, Hispanic, black, whatever. And then you get stuck in these weekly hotels where you can never save enough money to get out of them. And that's where churches used to come around, you know, the, the real work and poor so they could save money. You don't have family you can move in with till you save enough money to get on your feet? No, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. I, I, I work seven days a week at, uh, maintaining a, uh, an RV campsite. Well, if you're happy I then, brother, good job. So, yeah, Hallelujah. Well, good. You know, yeah, as long as you know the, love the universe and God, I mean, it's just every day is a banquet. It's just beauty, beauty everywhere. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was going to say, if, if you like the song, I mean, you're welcome to use it, uh, maybe audio, enhance it audio because I did it, I engineered it myself. I'm not a good Well, we got stuff like Crazy, like Alex Jones and Info Warrior and so much great music we've been sent. We should put more of that in rotation and uh, play more of it, then encourage others to make more. Uh, so that's a great idea. Uh, let me uh, let you go, Ziggy, and I'll play a little bit of this if our computer doesn't hiccup today like it was doing. We got three of them in there, but Lord knows, you know, how Internet is these days. Uh, do we have it queued up and ready? All right, let's if go to... If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the... So I set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect the discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. What will you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were to be on the line, I'd be right on what he's doing.
good music for a guy uh, who's almost homeless. It says the ones who want you gone. It's only got 50 something views. Let's get it to 10,000 views. Hear the whole song on YouTube. So yeah, we got over 600 entries and a lot of them, hundreds of them were like that. Uh, a lot of effort, uh, Paul Harvey, very powerful info, mixed together, and, and, and that is a widow's might, but it, it's great. It's a lot better than what I put out probably the first couple of years, so it's a lot better than what I put out a lot of the time. You don't get Darth Vader imitations everywhere, though, folks. Bubba in Virginia, thanks for holding, sir. You're on the year. Hello. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you, uh, yeah, brother. Thank you, uh met you last year at Chantilly at the Bilderberg protest. It was really awesome. Um, there's a couple of things I was wanting to address with you. Um, one is I take the train to work. I work up close to the uh, District of Criminals there. Oh, and you get to have TSA search you without warrants and stuff? That's right. They're, they're, they're probably every other week they come around. Uh, sometimes they have their little dogs with them with the... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're looking for the, uh, the uh, bombs that they put at the Boston Marathon. And they come around. They've they've never approached me, but some people I know they've, they've approached them. And they, and, I, and I said, what happened? They said, oh, they asked if they could look at my bag. I said, and she says, well, I'm not. I don't have anything to hide. And I said, like, no, that's not the point. It's not yeah, the no. They're, I mean, they're setting the. I mean, now the state police in Texas they don't even say, mind if I stick my hand in your rear end. They, without a warrant, they go get up against the car. And we're such animals. At an animal uh, veterinary clinic, they change gloves. They don't change gloves because we're lower than the animals. Yep. So they're, they're uh, And guess what, they're, cops they're, that they're, act like that? So are your kids. You just committed your children to hell. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But it's a lot of the psyche that's going on. It's the psyop that they're conducting too, because they walk around through there just to get people used to them being there. And it's not like like uh, Andy and Barney walking around. It's like the the Gestapo, the the night police come in. You know, they have their little fancy holsters on and the leg straps and they're and they're it's all government parading around that we've been conquered planting the flag and they even know it and, and and then they give them fake threats to feel like they're real and you know they did the boston bombing i mean of course it's an authoritarian mass murdering criminal government and it's all fake and it's all unconstitutional and it's all criminal because they're not going to let us decriminalize drugs so they can't make their money they're not going to let us not you know let our kids take their deadly shots they want to run our lives and they're average idiots. Uh, I shouldn't say that. A lot of the people that work in the government are, are actually more awake than most people because they, they know we're telling the truth. Uh, but the types that they get to go to those stupid Viper teams, I've seen them on the streets of L.A., not even at a bus terminal, walk up and go, why are you filming? You can't film me. Well, we had a reporter up in Chicago outside the train station at a restaurant. They come over and say, you're not allowed to film us. You put us on the Internet last week. I'll arrest you if you film me again. Just... Totally criminal, outside of law, just flaming authoritarians. Bubba, I mean, I'd go over to him and say, you're just here to acclimate people to checkpoints. And I know you've been told that. Why do you think this is being done? Because they're going to take everybody's pension funds. And you guys are the incremental rollout of martial law. Let us see your ID. No, I came over to you. I want to see your ID. You going to go talk to him? All the time. Just like you said, they're taking the pension funds. They do it. Almost every year at Christmas, uh, uh, Timothy Geithner, whoever's running the, the Gestapo down there, they, they come in there and they take it like, like over Christmas break or something. They'll come in there and take all the money out of the G Fund and the, T and the uh, TSP and they'll just take it. No, it's tiny, and, tiny, Tim. They didn't matter. Listen, let me tell you, those waddling TSA people, they just care about being able to tell a woman up against the wall. They don't care everything gets taken from them. They love it. They can never admit they're being gamed. So, see, they'll never admit that. I appreciate your call. And again, folks, it's all just fiat money. It, 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 none of it in the end will help anybody except the globalists that loan it to them. They take our money from the Treasury. The Treasury basically creates IOUs that we owe is what happens. And then the Federal Reserve puts it out and then gives the order to the Treasury to put out the physical. But then the Federal Reserve puts out 97% plus of the, uh, of the fiat. And then we go into debt to them. They get the whole world. The deeper they get us in debt, they get real assets when it all goes under. And they get to use the money when it still has fiat value on the way up. And on the way down, that's when they really consolidate everything and have guys in black uniforms walk around and shoot anybody that gets in the way of it until all of America is Detroit, broke city.
Is it not my king time to spring the trap? No, we must desecrate the soul and the flesh of the creator's creation. conversations during the breaks i'm like hey john Harmon up there in the minnesota network who's uh, helping run the satellites and stuff do you think a new listener tuning in when i kind of get crazy sometimes on fridays knows what's going on he goes i don't know they tune in and hear you saying unga boonga <laughs> i mean it's like i don't even care anymore i mean we got to stop caring people think anyways you know I, uh, and i gotta have some rest and relaxation on the air sometimes this stuff gets to me folks i, I just the only solace is the evil people helping bring this in are all going to get bit in the butt by what they're doing. They're not going to get away with it either. But I don't even really take pleasure in that. I just wish they weren't so bad. But they 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 like it. It's just their nature. Let's go real quick to John, and we're going to talk to Travis and a few others. John, thanks for holding. From Wyoming, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, Alex, on Wednesday's uh, NBC Nightly News, they accidentally showed what to me, was proof positive they never did the bin Laden raid. There's well, they, I mean, they, they, they've classified it from the military. The highest level people in the Pentagon can't look at it because it didn't happen, but go ahead. Right. What happened, their chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, who's normally in the Middle East, well, this time he was at Langley at CIA headquarters, and they were giving him a personal tour through the CIA museum, which is not open to the general public. Oh, yeah, and they showed it bin Laden's AK-47? Yeah, which was not his, because look at all of the file photos of bin Laden. He's carrying one of those shortened models. It was an AKS-74U that has about a 12-inch barrel. It's not really an assault. Well, of course it's fake. It might as well be Ripley's, believe it or not, with some you know giant's foot in a bottle of formaldehyde or one of those things where they put a carp onto a monkey skull and say it's a merman. I mean, it's, you know, they might as well like one of those snake snake pits they have on the side of the highway where you see some alligator sitting. I mean, yeah, it's just total bull. And Kurt Nemo wrote Laden. about that. CIA museum shows off AK-47 taken from dead Bin Laden, like something out of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Go ahead. Well, but Bin Laden's gun was in pristine condition with a 12-inch barrel. They showed an old ragged-out AK-47 <laughs> with a 16-inch barrel that was in trashy condition it was not the same gun look at the photo well listen do you know what else they have at that museum they have the gun that that uh, when they killed santa claus he had a few years ago they had a raid on the north pole and, and santa you know, they even have santa claus taxidermy at the cia base and and uh my little pony lives there too did you know that well whatever hey uh, you know i'm in for some serious stuff here because they showed they accidentally showed us the truth and now they're going to be backtracking because that was not been. Oh, yeah. Of course, there. they have an internal CIA museum for all the. Nobody's more brainwashed than the people that work at those places. There's a bunch of people putting sunglasses. I see CIA people and stuff, and they, they can't help but like wear suits and put their glasses on and take them off. And, uh, oh, my gosh, we're James Bond. Uh. No, you're just the front for the guys in the back with C-130s with kidnapped kids. And that's all on you, okay? That's on your mojo, baby. You're losers. Thank you, John. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go to, real quick to Travis. You said you spoke with your police chief. What did he say? We should have more CIA snuff films? Yes, Alex. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, I wanted to ask why you didn't ask about the Black Bloc anarchists. So I'm just, I know you asked him about the Delta Force. and He, he was, was told. He wasn't lying. He was told what to do. I talked to him later off air. He was told by Secret Service what to do. He wasn't running anything. That's why he apologizes and says it was wrong, but then he also takes the sword and says, but I'm responsible. Well, yeah, he did say that, and that's what I thought. He goes, well, it was kind of a community thing, and I'm thinking, no way, pal. Everybody said, hey, we're, we're doing this. You're standing over there, because they held those guys, and I seen it in your documentary, and then they got them out of here before they got arrested for breaking the, the windows down there in, in town. Well, I mean, look, they, 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 they tell girls it's the law to take Gardasil when they know it kills a bunch of them. I mean, th th that's who these people are. I mean, they're a pack of psycho demons. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.